Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie Mother, released in the year 2020. The movie revolves around a little boy named Shuhei, who lives with his irresponsible single mother. Akiko got his sole custody after she split from his dad. Shuhei's father never visits him, but he sends Akiko 50,000 yen as child support every month. Akiko doesn't work, and she wastes the money Shuhei's father sends her on unimportant things. When she runs out of money, she begs her family for help. Akiko has done this one too many times, and her family is fed up with her. One day, they put their foot down and refuse to give her a penny more. This enrages Akiko, and she accuses her mother of always favoring her younger sister, Kaide. She always blames her mother for not sending her to college, accusing Kaide of using all her money. Kaide quickly rebuffs her claims and reminds Akiko that she never liked to study and always got bad grades. Later, Akiko goes to a casino with Shuhei and gambles her last pennies away. There, she meets a fellow gambler named Ryo Kawata. They instantly click, and she takes him back home with her. The two get drunk, and when Akiko learns that Ryo is broke and doesn't have a place to stay, she insists him to spend the night at her home. They don't have gas or a heater at home, so when Ryo eventually agrees to stay, Akiko sends her son to the nearby store to get some hot water for instant noodles. When he returns, the poor boy hears Akiko have loud intercourse with Ryo. The next day, Akiko contacts a man named Mr. Ujita, who has a crush on her. She tells him she has to leave town for urgent business and asks him to babysit Shuhei till she comes back. Ujita agrees, but he leaves Shuhei alone at home with a bag full of noodles instead of taking him home. Meanwhile, it's revealed that Akiko has gone to another town with Ryo to audition to be a hostess at a bar. With no hot water, Shuhei is forced to eat raw instant noodles. After a couple of days, Akiko calls him and asks him to send her some money so she could return home. Left with no choice, baby Shuhei sends her the money he got from his aunt Kade. By the time Akiko returns home, they lose their electric connection after not having paid the electricity bill in a while. When she learns that Ujita left him at home alone, Akiko hatches a plan with Ryo to extort money from Ujita. They invite him to a restaurant and accuse him of inappropriately touching baby Shuhei. Ujita asks Shuhei to clear his name, but the little boy parrots his mother's claims. Ujita tries to deny it, but Ryo creates a scene in front of everyone, and Akiko threatens to report him to his office. Left with no choice, Ujita takes them to his home, where Ryo asks him to pay them to keep their mouths shut. Ujita goes upstairs to his room, and when he doesn't return, Ryo goes to investigate. Suddenly, Ryo attacks him with a knife, and a struggle follows. After hearing the commotion, Akiko runs upstairs. Lo and behold, it's revealed that Ryo has inadvertently stabbed Ujita during the struggle. The family panic and they leave the town, leaving Ujita to die. They hide in Ryo's hometown, where he picks up the job at a restaurant. He feeds his family with the leftover food from the restaurant. Two weeks pass by and Akiko decides to call her mother. To her surprise, she learns that Ujita is alive and he came looking for her. Excited, she runs back home and shares the news with Ryo. Ryo then steals money from a house in the neighborhood before the family heads back to the city. There, they use the stolen money to live in a love hotel. Ten days pass by and the family again runs out of money. To continue to keep a roof over their head, Akiko seduces Keichi Akagawa, the son of the hotel owner. Akiko also sends Shuhei to meet his father and ask him for money. Seeing his son in such a pitiable condition, the man asks Shuhei to come home with him, but the little boy insists on living with his mother. Left with no choice, Shuhei's father gives him some money before parting ways. Akiko then sends the little boy to his aunt Kaide to ask for money. However, Kaide catches her red-handed and confronts her. She contemptuously throws money at her before storming away, breaking all ties with her for good. Akiko's relationship with Ryo also begins to deteriorate when she gets pregnant. He baselessly accuses her of cheating on him and orders her to abort the baby. However, when Akiko refuses, Ryo breaks up with her and leaves. The commotion attracts the attention of Akagawa and he arrives to investigate. Akiko sends Shuhei out to buy her some beer and has intercourse with Akagawa. To return her favor, 
Akagawa arranges a sleeping tent on the hotel's roof for Akiko and the boy. Akagawa also buys books for Shuhei. Akiko hates her living arrangement, so she sends Shuhei to talk to his grandmother. As instructed, the boy tells his grandparents that Akiko is pregnant, but they also get enraged and disown her for good. Five years pass by, and Akiko has given birth to a girl named Fuyuka. Akiko now lives with Shuhei and Fuyuka under a flyover bridge. One day, a social worker named Aya notices them and interviews Akiko. When Aya asks her why she stopped taking the welfare benefits, Akiko loses her temper and says she will do as she pleases. However, the social worker reminds her that if she continues like this, she could end up losing the custody of her children. Left with no choice, she is forced to take help from the social workers, and they put her family in public housing. They also enroll both the children in government schools. One day, Ryo shows up at the door. He reveals that he's been looking for them for years, and he's very happy to see his daughter all grown up. However, Akiko isn't happy to see him, and she tries to get rid of him, but he refuses to leave. Akiko eventually accepts him, but he doesn't take long to act up again. One day, he beats her for flirting with another man for money. Seeing them witness violence, the social worker takes the children away to a restaurant, where she tells them about her own rough childhood. She reveals that she grew up in an orphanage and was abused as a child. She also tells them that they have the choice of living away from their mother. Soon, Akiko again makes them skip school. However, Aya keeps tabs on the children and brings books for them. However, this upsets Akiko and she throws the books out in a fit of rage. The next day, when Shuhei and Fuyuka return home from school, they see Akiko and Ryo frantically packing their bags. It turns out they have again taken a lot of debt, and the debt collectors are on their way to the location. Akiko asks Shuhei to help them pack, but Shuhei reveals that he doesn't want to leave. He wants to stay and go to school. However, Akiko insults him and forces him to come along. They leave together, but Ryo soon realizes he's endangering Akiko and the children's life by running with them. Reluctantly, he decides to leave in order to prevent the debt collectors from going after them. When the realization hits Akiko that Ryo might never come back, she breaks into tears and hangs on to her son for support. Six months pass by. Shuhei has started working at a garage. Akiko continues to gamble, and she forces Shuhei to steal from his job. One night, Shuhei's boss Matsura catches him red-handed and confronts Akiko for being a good-for-nothing mother. However, he ends up pitying her and invites Akiko and the children over for dinner. Akiko apologizes to Matsura for everything, and he offers a job to her. It's also revealed that Matsura is single after he lost his wife. One day, Akiko receives a message from Ryo asking her for help. Ryo says that if he doesn't arrange 500,000 yen by tomorrow, the debt collectors are going to finish him. However, Akiko is helpless and she seemingly ignores the message. Instead, she seduces Matsura and has intercourse with him in his office. When Matsuda leaves, Akiko steals his keys to the safe and makes Shuhei steal money again to save Ryo. However, the money's not enough, so they decide to keep the money and run away again. They again run out of money and return to the streets. Akiko begins to lose her mind and starts plotting about killing her mother so she could take her money. Shuhei is naturally against it, but Akiko reminds him that his little sister could die of hunger and gets him on board with the plan. In the next scene, Akiko waits in a park with Fuyuka while Shuhei goes for the kill. Unbeknownst to Shuhei's intentions, the grandmother initially doesn't recognize an all-grown-up Shuhei. But when she does, she's excited to meet him after so many years. Shuhei sits down with his grandparents and tells him about Fuyuka. Shuhei's grandfather expresses his desire to see his granddaughter. Shuhei promises to take them to Fuyuka, but when his grandmother goes to the kitchen to fix lunch for him, he follows her and eliminates her. When his grandfather rushes to the kitchen, Shuhei eliminates him too. After taking out his grandparents, Shuhei moves into their home with his mother and half-sister. Some days later, Aya learns about the double homicide and Shuhei's arrest through the radio. After five months pass by, Akiko is also taken into custody and questioned by the police. They believe that Shuhei would never have murdered anyone if she hadn't encouraged him. Akiko denies doing so, but she also reminds him that he can do as he pleases. 
The investigators then talk to Shuhei and remind him that the time he will spend in jail depends on Akiko and his confession. However, Shuhei takes full responsibility for the double murder. Consequently, Akiko gets three years of probation, while Shuhei is sentenced to 12 years in prison. Neither of them appeal the rulings. One day, Aya visits Shuhei and tells him that Fuyuka has found a foster family. When Aya asks him why he took all the responsibility for the murder, Shuhei tells her that it's better in prison than outside. He can eat regularly and read as many books as he wants. Before leaving, he says despite everything, he loves his mother because she's helpless on her own. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.